Okay, yes. Uh, hello, uh, An hello, Andri, do you hear me? Yes, yeah, I need to hear you. Very well. Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, PCS seminar. It's a pleasure to have Professor Andri Sotikov with us today. We actually first time, I don't know when we first time met, uh, at least consciously, I don't remember anymore. But we definitely re met this year online at a, uh, at a conference which was run by uh, uh, by an institute or a university in Kharkov uh, on condensed matter physics, if I remember correctly. And that's where we uh, met. And then uh, from that, uh, we developed some discussions. And then uh, as a result, we now have here uh, this uh, online seminar. So it's uh, great that you have time. Let me say a few uh, words about Andri. Um, he did his uh, master in physics at Kharkiv National University in 2006, and then the PhD in 2010 uh, at the Kharkiv Institute of Physics and Technology. And uh, he topped that uh, 10 years later by the uh, Doctor of Sciences in Theoretical Physics in 2020. I uh, remind you, this is this uh, analog of the habilitation in some uh, other European uh, countries like Germany, Switzerland, maybe in Austria, and I don't know where else, uh, which is a kind of a much higher level of um, academic accomplishments, um, which he did in 2020. Now, uh, work-wise, uh, Andris, uh, after his PhD, spent uh, had a few postdocs abroad, which I want to mention. One of them was at the uh, Institut für Theoretische Physik, Goethe Universität. Frankfurt am Main with uh, Professor Hochstetter, and then another one uh, at the Institute of Physics, Czech Academy of Sciences in Prague, slash Vienna University of Technology, Austria. So kind of like divided between two places, like a quantum particle. And uh, then uh, um, Andre moved on and uh, returned back to, uh, to Ukraine, to Kharkiv, and uh, where he is since a uh, leading staff scientist at the Archiza Institute for Theoretical Physics, at the Kharkiv Institute of um, Physics. Physics and Technology. Uh, and he's also uh, a professor at the same time at the School of Physics and Technology of the Kharkiv National University. He has uh, a number of research interests, which, uh, which uh, range around quantum many body systems, quantum computing, Condensed matter called atoms, strong correlations, uh, and so on. Dynamical mean field theory, maybe for those who like to do computations. He uh, has a solid uh, number of more than 100 publications. And uh, today we look very much forward to uh, your talk on many body localization in one year stark letters with long range interactions. Uh, Andre, the floor is yours. Uh, please welcome our speaker. Thank you, Professor Klach, uh, for a very kind introduction. It's a great pleasure for me to present uh, some results of my research. Uh, and uh, But first of all, I would like maybe uh, during these challenging times for Ukraine, for the great support from uh, Korea uh, in these uh, times of uh, aggression against Ukraine. So thank you very much and be appreciated very much. Uh, besides uh, that, uh, I would like also uh, uh, to say a few words that we are already thinking how to uh, revitalize the scientific uh, uh, life after the war. And uh, uh, I think this Center for Theoretical Physics of Complex Systems uh, is uh, a very decent benchmark for us how to, we are also thinking of development of these uh, similar scientific centers. And you are a very nice example for us how to proceed and how to, to, to construct a world leading uh, center for theoretical physics. So, and I hope that, that we will also stay in touch with your center in the future regarding personal organization details and uh, co uh, collaborations. So uh, the, today's title of uh, my talk uh, uh, is closely related 
to the topic that we discussed with Professor Fach on the conference uh, recently, uh, two months ago in Kharkiv. Uh, so it's about many by our research direction and many body localization in one star clad or series long range directions. So let me begin with uh, uh, basic introduction, starting from uh, classical systems and then diving in more and more co complex details. And uh, I would be happy to reply to uh, your questions if they appear immediately during the talk. I know that it's a little bit uh, non usual to, uh, to do it uh, during virtual talk because we, we do not have a very direct eye contact so that possibly I cannot see who is uh, raising the hand with the question so please interrupt me with with the voice if, if necessary but i'm also uh, after shortly after the talk for any further questions so uh, uh, i would like to start with uh, some classical example of uh, classical chaos uh, ergodicity and thermalization all these uh, uh, topics are closely uh, related to to, to each other. So let me uh, just put an example of a classical asymmetric double well with, with the known landscape of the energy versus position. So, and assume that we have uh, randomly, uniformly distributed positions and momenta, uh, so called phase space. So, if it's uniform distribution in the phase space, so we have in energy versus moment uh, versus position some kind of uh, distribution of most probably positions of the particle inside this uh, asymmetric double well. And you see that in in local or global minima, the, there is enhanced probability to find the particle if it has a uh, uniform distribution of the momentum. So and here is the density of states plotted versus energy but if we now work with the system isolated system as we know uh, from statistical mechanic courses at the fixed energy this corresponds to macroeconomical ensemble distribute uh, 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 description so then uh, we fix the energy inside a certain range and then uh, the in the uh, phase space, we immediately obtain some closed contours where we uh, the particle can can be uh, found. So and uh, the particle occupies these positions in the phase space. And here uh, we can also think about uh, calculating observables. For example, if it's uh, a guess of particles, so we can measure the the uh, pressure of the gas, for example, if you be known the, the volume, uh, uh, if, we, if we work with the fixed volume as an external variable. So we, we can measure uh, uh, in two ways uh, the, the uh, uh, physical observables. We can calculate uh, the averaged over time observable. So, and uh, we can calculate average of, over the phase space. And uh, every point in this phase space corresponds to the condition that uh, Hamiltonian of the system equals the energy inside uh, this uh, certain range. So during and ergodic hypothesis uh, corresponds to the statement that all microstates with the same energy E are equally accessible during long enough evolution of the system. And uh, this is uh, the essence of the description of the ensembles uh, and uh, in case of uh, thermalized systems. So this corresponds to classical description. Then we transform to more complex quantum behavior. So we start from the classical systems and we can have either regular billiard, for example, or chaotic billiard. And if we transform to the uh, quantum description with eigenstates and most probably uh, 
positions uh, in this uh, and calculate eigenstates with uh, characteristic num uh, quantum numbers. So we observe also regular behavior in the quantum regime. So there is certain correspondence of quantum and classical picture. If we then transform to chaotic billiards, so this is example of cardioid billiard. So there is also a so-called effect of quantum scars. The classically chaotic quantum systems have enhanced probability density around the paths of unstable classical periodic orbits. So we have also corresponding in chaotic regime of quantum description and classical one. So let me start with a rather basic example of Anderson localization and uh, it dates back to 1958. Uh, we have a quantum model. It's called Anderson model. So uh, we have uh, operation annihilation operators on the lattice side I in I plus one. So this corresponds to hopping on the particle, quantum particle between the nearest neighbor lattice sites or terminally. So in one dimensional regime, we have amplitude for this process J1. And one corresponds to nearest neighbors, but there can be also next nearest neighbors. So extension of the model to uh, more complex regimes. And we have amplitude of the random potential. So uh, W and uh, epsilon I is just uh, uniformly dist uh, distribution or random distribution. Uh, so we have random external potential and uh, if we uh, so what we can observe that uh, with the increase of uh, randomness in this lattice we we observe uh, localization of the uh, wave function in this lattice and uh, the characteristic regime we have a localization wavelengths which is inverse proportional to the square of the amplitude of the random potential and uh, exponential uh, decay of uh, uh, weight functions uh, in, in the coordinate space. So this uh, picture holds also, it was proven that it was, uh, it holds also upon inclusion of small interactions. And this now called as the many body localization since particle now interact with each other. The initial Hamiltonian is just single particle. Uh, uh, sorry, there's a question, Andre. Yeah. Uh, what precisely do you mean by small interaction in this, this context? Uh, just uh, perturbation, uh, small perturbation by interactions uh, with coupling a regime. Uh, the measure is double U or some, something else? I don't... Yeah, yes. Exactly. Okay. Uh, then uh, we we can uh, first just show some uh, initial classification, and then I go into details what means the level statistic distribution, Wigner Dyson. So in the chaotic regime, uh, I will show. On next slide, so the different regimes, chaotic, many body localized, and uh, in integrable systems, we have different types of distributions of level spacings, Poissonian like or Wigner Dyson. So we can observe, uh, we can characterize uh, these systems by robustness to deformations, so inclusion okay. addition. What do you mean by deformations here in each case? Just additional terms in the Hamiltonian, for example. Just small change of uh, parameters. So we have uh, a thermalization in the case of chaotic regime and in case of MPL, this doesn't thermalizes. Uh, in chaotic regime, we have uh, not enough uh, integrals of motion to exactly solve the model, but uh, in case of MBM, there is a number 
of quasi-local operators, but uh, the, the number is uh, for, for uh, most regimes is uh, extensively large to solve exactly. Uh, and uh, in integrable systems, there is extensive sum of local operators. So characteristics examples for chaotic regimes, there are too many examples of quantum models, especially lattice models, which we work with in, in high dimensions, three I and mean, three dimensional systems, for example. In one dimensional systems uh, with strong disorder and change range interaction, it was proven that uh, one can observe many body localization behavior and also extensions to two dimensional systems. And uh, uh, the group of Professor Flach also works on extensions to high dimensional systems as well. And uh, with in two-dimensional systems, so uh, integrable systems are those who, uh, which have uh, better NZs integrability or some examples of quantum Newton's cradle uh, uh, correspond to integrable systems. So what are the characteristic signs of many body localizations? So as I mentioned, uh, there is Poissonian statistics of level spacings, non-ergotic behavior of local observables. So there is late time dynamics, uh, which doesn't and observables, uh, uh, expectation values that doesn't uh, match uh, statistical ensemble average. Uh, the, in the later dynamics, there is certain memory of the initial state, and this is actually very, uh, very uh, kind of important from the point of view of quantum information applications. There is a logarithmic growth of entanglement entropy uh, in uh, many body localization regime. So it's slower than linear growth in chaotic systems. Uh, wave functions are exponentially localized in space. Uh, uh, there is extensive set of localized inter uh, integrals of motion and uh, rather small entanglement of all eigenstates. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, I quite frequently heard about this uh, logarithmic growth of entanglement entropy in MBL systems. What does it do actually in a truly integrable system? Does it also grow, uh, or does it not grow, or does it grow logarithmically, or what happens in it? If we just take a, a known integrable system and you compute this entanglement entropy growth. Yeah, it, it grows uh, logarithmically and then uh, saturates. Okay, ah, saturates. And uh, in MBL, it's not saturated. It's, it's saturated, but uh, the, you, you need a uh, kind of on the ex extended exponential scale, look at it. so it, it saturates but uh, slower. Yeah, thank you. So I will show some some characteristic uh, figures. So in case of stark localization, which we uh, which is the subject uh, partly the subject of this talk, uh, uh, so we have lattice systems uh, with uh, external linear potential. So the, the external tilt, uh, and uh, it, it's uh, very uh, interesting since uh, it can be more or less uh, straightforwardly realized with ultra cold atoms uh, in uh, optical lattices. Uh, so it, it's uh, uh, there are certain proposals for applications in quantum memories. And in case of local interactions, uh, it was shown in previous studies that uh, one needs additional regular, uh, regularization to stabilize many body localization. So that, uh, one needs to add uh, some small disorders or, uh, or harmonic track confinement to stabilize uh, many body localized states. So in the easiest setting, uh, so it is not sufficient to stabilize many body localization just with uh, local interaction. And here we show that uh, the long range interaction is sufficient to stabilize many body localization. So one uh, doesn't need uh, additional disorder 
introduced in the system. So in case of ultra cold atom synoptical lattices, these are rather clean systems and you need to, to pr produce additional disorder in contrast to condensed matter or solid state systems where disorder is usually present. Yeah, we will tell later about uh, this stabilizing thing. Uh, what is uh, unstable in the case of local interactions uh, and stark localization? Or will you talk about it later in more detail? Yeah, uh, yeah, I will talk to you. So uh, let me uh, just uh, show the systems uh, which. Uh, uh, which we study in more uh, detail. So, so we have uh, uh, spinless fermions loaded into the optical lattice and external tilt of this lattice. Uh, there is uh, hopping amplitude, J1, but there can be also longer range hopping amplitude. We tested that uh, actually if we include uh, uh, hopping amplitudes beyond nearest neighbors, uh, still uh, many body localization is stable upon inclusion of longer range hoppings. There is a nearest neighbor interaction new, but also longer range interactions. So I will show the uh, mathematical expression, but it's uh, just uh, uh, some exponential in the denominator R in the power of alpha. So it decreases, the amplitude decreases with, uh, with uh, the distance, but uh, but it's present at, even between three sides. So according to some law. So in case of spinless bosons, which we also consider in our model, so we have addition, so almost the same picture, but we have also on-site interactions in the bosonic case since there is no Pali exclusion principle. So bosons of the same uh, in the same quantum state can occupy the same lattice site. And this is also the subject of our study. Uh, we we also consider a spin one half chain in uh, in almost linear magnetic field. This comes just uh, automatically when we try to uh, uh, by means of Jordan Wigner transformations uh, to apply a matrix product states approaches uh, or uh, density matrix randomization group approach. Usually there are developed methodology to for description of spin one half chains. So it's uh, more straightforward to transform spinless fermions uh, to spin one half chain and then uh, uh, calculate observables in this system by means of uh, your Dandignor transformation. So it's almost uh, the same uh, system. Uh, so there is uh, one by uh, to one correspondence between spinless fermions and spin one half chain. The difference only that uh, on boundaries there is no uh, further neighbors. If we have uh, uh, open boundaries, we we have a slightly non-uniform increase of uh, effective magnetic field acting on this uh, spin one half uh, particles. But other than that, uh, it's just uh, uh, one to one correspondence. And in, uh, we also studied how the many body localization stable upon uh, inclusion of uh, additional cavity mediated interaction. So we have particles which loaded into optical lattices, but also in, uh, are inside the cavity and cavity modes uh, produce additional interactions of the same amplitude so it's all to all interactions with so the particle independently or on the distance uh, between other particles interact with the same amplitude with others so it's uh, the uh, uh, the longest possible interaction amplitude so all to all interactions so we tested also many body localization upon uh, so with respect to inclusion of this So, uh, and we just uh, discuss known limits where we can have uh, uh, solutions, even analytic ones. So, and uh, just uh, to warm up, uh, we start from uh, block localization. 
we have uh, no interaction between particles, so this is sol a solvable model, single particles, so we have eigenengineers separated by amplitude of the external linear field, so we have lattice side here, all, uh, so, and uh, we have uh, wave functions uh, uh, exp pressed in terms of Bessel function, and usually these Bessel functions are exponentially localized if the amplitude of the external tilt f is larger than the two times uh, this uh, Hopin amplitude. But also it can be shown that uh, uh, the localization holds even uh, at a uh, smaller uh, uh, Lattice tilts. And actually, if I may comment, uh, I think it's faster than exponential, if I remember correctly. So, okay. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, not much faster, but somehow logarithmically faster or something like this. I think I, I saw, yeah, uh, yeah, your statements in uh, uh, the paper, the PRB 2000, right? Yeah, 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 thank you for this comment. And uh, so if we include interactions, uh, there is uh, one or uh, uh, just uh, only nearest neighbor interactions. For example, we have uh, uh, stark localizations. Uh, at, and uh, usually, so the uh, there are studies that tested uh, localization in the regime of uh, large lattice tilts, and uh, but uh, included also additional terms to the Hamiltonian to stabilize localization. So, I'm hey, not. What is the number of particles? Is it there are no difference of the number of particles and many by localizing? In relation, your yeah. electron is very large. Elect electron, electron, I use the your particle is very large. Particle particle interaction is very important. But, uh, very, but daily case, uh, interaction is very weak. In the in case, I'm very confused. You do not say any anything about the, the number of particles. Is there any relation between? Anybody localization and number of particle and particle. Excuse me, I, I I think I I do not. Uh... The, the question is, uh, uh, what? Uh, how is the number of particles, or maybe the the uh, better to say the, the density? Because you have, you probably consider an infinite system somehow, so. You have an infinite number of particles, but you have some kind of finite density of particles. Yeah, so, usually, yeah. So yeah. Question is how is that uh, impacting the statements which we see on this slide? Uh, yeah, th th this is good question. So, but uh, mainly we so we uh, uh, studied uh, the regime of uh, half field model and we summed. Uh, also near half, half thin, and so we observed no strong deviations from the main findings. So, of course, at, at half thin, so the impact of interaction is the largest, since there can be some kind of uh, uh, mod-like behavior uh, transition or or this devil staircase behavior uh, uh, in case of. Uh, Rational payments uh, with long range interactions. But mainly, uh, if we say about the uh, robustness uh, or of the result, main results against uh, uh, the tilt, so it remains the same since there is no interaction entering this condition. So the, uh, the transition may be affected, but not that large. So I, I will show in diagrams. So it, it, it actually shifted uh, so to larger uh, to larger uh, uh, lattice steels. Right? The transition. So in diagrams, it will be very straightforward and visible. So uh, 
So what, what we use for to characterize the transition between the many localized regime and chaotic behavior. So if we think about, uh, if we have access uh, to a description of, of the full system, uh, we have, we obtain energy spectrum, determine level spacing and construct statistical distribution of latent uh, level space. So for example, we have access to all eigenstates in the system by some means. Uh, some exact diagonalization or other other approach. So if it's a uh, Wigner Dyson type uh, distribution, so the, this red dis uh, line, uh, then we can uh, conclude that it's a chaotic regime. If it's uh, Poissonian like, so it's many body localized regime. And uh, uh, so the characteristic observable is uh, the gap ratio or quantity it's not an observable actually so uh, then we calculate uh, averages of our nearest neighbor triples in the spectrum and uh, calculate this uh, quantity and if it, it appears close to 53 it's chaotic regime and in many by localized regime it's all 38 and uh, it was uh, i would recommend in this respect also very nice review by tia this year from 2016. About so, this. yes so as the numbers the universal for this type of system so for some for what kind of problems these numbers are universal for characterization of chaotic and inverse regimes for a uh, yeah, thank you for a large ra range of quantum systems, uh, respectively of dimensionality uh, interactions. And so, if you can uh, obtain a full energy spectrum of the quantum system, uh, then you can uh, analyze it and, and make a, such a conclusion. So it's a rather universal, I would say, in this respect. And now uh, we go to the phase diagrams. So the question also was how do, how stable many body localization against uh, inclusion of interaction, for example. And uh, yeah, I do not have here uh, the the cases near half filling. So we have, for example, sixteen lattice sites and eight particles in our tilted lattice. So this is fermionic system. And we include additional interaction uh, uh, with near, uh, nearest neighbor, uh, uh, beyond nearest neighbor, sorry. So uh, with uh, this exponent alpha. And so alpha, small alpha corresponds to very long range. So maybe even uh, one half is unphysical, but we wanted to test it. But uh, alpha equals three, alpha equals one, two. These are completely physical regimes for for Coulomb interaction, for dipole-dipole interaction, for example. And we also can include also additional coupings beyond nearest neighbors. We used uh, exact diagonalization for this system. We could also increase uh, lattice uh, uh, size to up to 20 lattice size, but, but to produce phase diagrams, so to calculate uh, this gap ratio in every point, we need, uh, so it, it costs uh, computational time. So we've chosen 16 as the central scenario and obtained phase diagrams. So we see that uh, the generally uh, the many body localized states uh, appears uh, at uh, around, so the system becomes localized at uh, lattice steels uh, approximately two in units of uh, hopping J1. So in certain regimes, uh, it becomes not that uh, much visible, but sometimes it's also due to the effect of uh, finite size effects. With this, we also analyzed a bit. So we also included uh, next near uh, nearest neighbor hoppings G two and tuned uh, the uh, this uh, hopping. Usually for optical lattice systems and called atoms, uh, the regimes when the next nearest neighbor hopping larger than, than the usual one, uh, 
when it exists, it's less physical. So, but uh, in the regime uh, of small J2, we see that uh, many body localization transition from uh, uh, yellow color to blue one is stable. Uh, we also uh, included, uh, as I mentioned, uh, cavity mediated interactions. So additional term in the Hamiltonian that uh, corresponds to interactions all with all particles in the system. And do, do you hear? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go uh, back one slide, please, and explain uh, what you meant by uh, instability. Where is this instability in this picture? Do we see it? Oh, the, I mean, uh, so so instability with respect to uh, ah, uh, instability with, with uh, the range of uh, interactions, right? So, uh, so alpha equals three is kind of like short range. So, so where is there some where do I see this instability? Or if I do in this plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so alpha equals three. So usually you need to go further to to. So it's still long range case, but in case of local interactions, uh, we need to increase further alpha. And but uh, so it's uh, when you start to analyze this uh, gap ratio, it's uh, it becomes uh, highly sensitive on the on the. Uh, uh, on the numerical accuracy, so it, it uh, in one point you can have either either uh, many body localized state or or uh, uh, chaotic behavior. So so the, the effect of numerical noise just destabilizes the the uh, the study of this behavior. Oh, do, you, do you understand the underlying reason for this? <clears throat> Yeah, so the, there are uh, degeneracies uh, in the in the energy spectrum, so that are lifted by long range interactions. What, why are they there for short range interaction? Well, what's the origin? Uh, the, the, there are additional uh, uh, integrals of motion. So our arguments that produce additional degeneracies in the spectrum. Do you know these integrals of motion? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So I I think uh, so I, I cannot answer at this moment. So no, the answer is no at this moment. Yeah, but it's a good question. So nobody uh, stated uh, explicitly in previous literature uh, what are these. I mean, there was I remember there was some paper some time ago by. Uh, people from uh, Max Planck and Dresden, including Messner and others, I don't remember, Masoud Haag maybe and others, where they also did some calculations on uh, MBL in, in, in an interacting stark weather. Mm -hmm. Did you did you check that paper? Did you do you know this? And were they also referring to some uh, degeneracies or some issues similar to the ones you raise here? Uh, uh, could you repeat uh, the first author? Of I don't remember. I have to. I have to check. I just remember that there were a few of them, including Woodrich uh, Messner and uh, Masoud Haag and others. If uh -huh. I am right, L let me check later, and then maybe I, I send an email to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for suggestion. So, but we we did. To, uh, literature search and didn't find a reasonable explanation for this but uh, it, it seems that uh, uh, all these uh, uh, studies uh, required additional realization of this uh, to, to obtain a stable behavior so add some small render perturbation to lift these de degeneracies and uh, to calculate uh, more explicitly this uh, gap ratio more precisely just average of our uh, of our many uh, random realizations thank you so and uh, so we see that this, uh, it, it remains stable upon the inclusion of uh, long range interactions long range hoppings and uh, 
We also performed some finite size scaling analysis and determined explicitly where this, uh, according to this uh, finite size uh, scaling analysis. So we have a tra transition position for th these are points from this finite size analysis. So because uh, we, we have smooth uh, transition uh, gradient color and to, to determine explicitly the phase boundary uh, for infinite system, we can perform also this analysis. And uh, we see that uh, by tuning alpha, we have this transition ha happening at reasonable range, uh, more physically relevant range of alpha around lattice steels, so uh, close to approximately to uh, hopping amplitudes. So, uh, can I? Yeah. Uh, here, uh, you are talking always about the average R over the full spectrum, or you take uh, you focus on some energy, some specific energy, and just take a energy range. Yeah, usually we we have uh, so with exact diagonalization we have access to all the energy spectrum, and to be uh, need to average our whole energy spectrum. Mm -hmm. So this this is all the results that we've shown. It's the average over the whole. Spectrum. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I so, can, yeah. what, what what is actually yeah in some sense what means energy here because you in the stark uh, letter you have an uh, unbounded. Uh, spectrum in a sense, right? So, so what means actually energy in a sense? Hmm. I mean, in samples, fine. So, so we so have two, fine that's a fine. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's if you uh, send it to infinity, then. <laughs> yeah, if it's infinite, we, we cannot perform any uh, numerical analysis. Yeah, then, then it's it's a good question of how to how to analyze it. Yeah, I mean, you and, could you could argue that you that some states which have energies at the close to the uh, close to the edges of your spectrum due to the finite system size that maybe you want to. Uh, throw them away, disregard them, and only take a certain bulk part of the spectrum, so that yeah. you kind of do like an infinitely large system, more or less. Did you do that? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, I saw some uh, studies of uh, of uh, many body localization. They where they can also perform some kind of filtering of of the the energy spectrum and look precisely and the certain ranges inside this energy spectrum and apply uh uh types procedures in the exact organization so essentially if uh, you experience enough uh, with uh, analyzing this kind of uh, behavior uh, chaotic versus and many body localized you can always choose the certain energy range and determine more or less up to certain precision uh, this uh, tr uh, transition. I am a question. Is the boundary condition or period? What is your boundary condition in your calculation? So, boundary. Uh, Conditions are uh, not not uh, already doesn't play that much role in this in this regime. So we we can. Eric, what are the boundary conditions? That's uh, So uh, here we have uh, in a numerical analysis open boundary conditions. So another approach. If we go away from uh, the analysis of uh, of the full spectrum of the model, imagine we have too large system to analyze exactly, or we can look at some other characteristic observables. And uh, so, and uh, the most convenient observable for these uh, systems of quantum particles in this uh, 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 Tilted lattices, for example, can be the charge density wave uh, parameter. So imagine we prepared initially the system in this charge density wave state. So uh, the particle occupies every second side. Uh, so we uh, 
uh, perform time evolution of the system with a given Hamiltonian uh, with long range interactions and uh, calculate characteristic observable with the wave function uh, corresponding uh, uh, to the time t. And calculate this uh, imbalance parameter. So number of uh, particles on even sides minus number of particles on odd sides divided by the total number of particles. And uh, we can, uh, in addition to, to imbalance, we also calculate apartheid entanglement entropy with the uh, reduced density matrix between subsystems A and B. Usually we divide the system just on equal halves in the center to calculate this episode. And uh, what we can observe with harmonic systems, st still we use uh, exact diagonalization as uh, the reference for other approaches for larger systems. Uh, still, we, we have uh, the, the access to all, all spectrum of the model, but we focus on other observables. So if we have a small lattice tilt, uh, so this is chaotic regime according to phase diagrams, and we start from uh, imbalance, full imbalance, charge density wave. So we have oscillation of this observable, and then it saturates to zero. So the to to the value uh, uh, which is uh, also uh, suggested by macroeconomical ensemble thermal distribution. In case of large lattice tilts, uh, so this is uh, figure to the right, we start again from uh, the same uh, initial state, but uh, the system evolves and, uh, and saturates at the values different from the value suggested by macrocanonical ensemble. So we observe this kind of, uh, as I mentioned, memory on the initial state and uh, uh, no thermalization actually in this system. And we see uh, how entropy grows. So it grows linearly in the case of uh, chaotic behavior and it grows logarithmically much slower. So it still grows on regular times where we chaotic uh, uh, system already assess, uh, the entropy saturated. But to observe saturation in many body localization regime, you need to, to wait long enough uh, on the time scales of the order of thousands of inverse of hopping amplitude. So it doesn't grow further in the many body localized regime as well. And uh, so one can uh, try to, to construct some effective uh, phase diagram based on the difference, for example, of observables between uh, predicted uh, by, uh, by microcanonical thermal distribution and actual behavior of the system on long uh, time scales. And we construct more or less similar phase diagrams and we observe transition close to two as well. Uh, it also has has proper derivative, so it it, it is shifted towards uh, larger uh, lattice tilts with increase of interaction strengths. So mainly we can construct some kind of effective phase diagram based on another observable like this imbalance. Uh, so I show here uh, just directly uh, comparison of harmonic and bosonic systems, so they do not differ much according to our results. So I'm um, already used used enough time, but but uh, let me show you another results by a different approach. This is matrix product state approach, uh, time dependent variation principle. Which is good to to, uh, uh, to apply for larger system sizes, which is not, uh, not accessible for other exact methods like exact diagonalization. So, matrix product states approach can be viewed as quasi exact in this respect. So, uh, and for large system sizes, so we have uh, closer to thermodynamic limit. Of the system, uh, we have uh, uh, dependence at largest different lattice tilts, and we have imbalance, which said also saturates 
not at the zero or, or close to zero, which is predicted by the thermal ensemble. And we have qualitatively similar behavior to what we observed with exact diagonalization for small systems. But now for large enough systems, we have this uh, many body manifestation of many body localizations where uh, when we have lattice tilts uh, above certain threshold uh, close to two. And uh, behavior entropy of entropy also confirms different regimes in the behavior. So linear growth versus logarithmic growth uh, of the entanglement entropy. With this, uh, let me uh, just show some summary of our study. So we studied both bosonic and fermionic models uh, with linear external potential and long range interactions. Systems are generally localized for large uh, tilts. Uh, stark many body localization is generally stable to both long range hopings and long range interactions. Uh, so we do not require any additional disorder or harmonic potential for uh, analysis. And uh, so it opens some pers new perspectives to Floquet time dynamics of infinite systems. Uh, it opens a very important uh, uh, direction of two dimensional uh, uh, analysis of two dimensional systems and many body localization effects in these systems. There are not that many studies by now, uh, but I would like to mention uh, uh, Professor Flach's results uh, with uh, with authors uh, uh, on. Uh, on vanier stark localization uh, in a single particle regime or also two particle regimes so by perturbation theory. And also there was uh, one, uh, at least one study that I know by now of a two dimensional system with the tensor uh, or with matrix product states approach, but with local interactions and uh, the authors also used uh, this uh, random uh, additional potential to stabilize analysis of uh, many body localization. So up to now, the long range interacting systems in uh, uh, increased dimensions were not studied with, uh, with uh, approaches according to our uh, analysis. So with this, uh, I would like also to thank my uh, colleagues, uh, the theory group uh, in the front of the Institute. This is a young team supported by, uh, by two grants of National Research Foundation of Ukraine and Ministry of Sciences of Ukraine. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, discussions with, uh, with uh, Alexander Burian. We had recently, and uh, of course, Professor Flach. At the conference, I was also excited to discuss and to, 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 to learn more about your results with flat bands, especially. So this is published last year in Physical Review B. And uh, since uh, uh, this is uh, our first uh, meeting with the group in, uh, in the Center for Theoretical Physics of Complex Systems, I would like also to mention other research directions currently uh, uh, or just uh, conducted uh, recently with my colleagues. So we studied, for example, quantum many body system in continuum, uh, one dimensional systems, uh, so-called Kalogero Moser uh, model, which is successfully solvable, but we applied a new approach based on matrix product states algorithms and published last year. We also study quantum lattice models with uh, with uh, advanced approaches of Cognac transfer matrix renormalization group and applied it to Heisenberg spin model and Kitaev model recently. And now we are also working on the application of this approach to new geometries of lattices, uh, to other geometries of lattices like triangular, uh, Kagome lattice and other. Uh, are, Another research direction is, uh, con uh, is related to Bose Einstein condensation in nearly flat topological bands uh, uh, by midfield approach, uh, Bogolubov midfield theory, and uh, Popov approximation beyond. 
we also study by means of dynamical mean field theory uh, highly symmetric models like SU for symmetric fermionic model, which can be realized with alkaline earth like atoms in optical lattices. This is another interesting direction of our research. And we apply on different lattice geometries, observe and also observe, at least with mean field approaches, uh, tra transitions from uh, between different magnetic orderings in layered lattices at this moment. Uh, and uh, we also study magnetic and orbital uh, uh, order and effects, so we extend the model to two orbital Hubbard model, so that particles can have uh, different spin projections and different orbital uh, quantum num uh, degrees of freedom, and uh, also apply uh, different approaches to study behavior and uh, many body correlations in these systems with uh, theoretical approaches. With this, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, for this very nice talk. We still have time for questions. Yes, Oleg. I have a question. Uh, what kind of effects or maybe differences uh, you can expect if you consider in full permanence in your model? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. It's much uh, so. Uh, I I am a big fan of the Hubbard model and spinful systems since we also study uh, magnetic properties. I think we can have access to much more uh, observables. So and many body localizations certainly will uh, will have uh, impact on the uh, behavior of observables. So so I assume there will be more effects of uh, also evolution of observables, uh, magnetic correlations uh, to non-thermal states, and this is a very interesting direction. But uh, yeah, as we understand uh, the complexity of the problem, uh, grows. Uh, rather intensively with with the increase uh, with the adding spin degrees of freedom to the model so yeah thank More you questions yes i have hmm. okay from the zoom andre please yes uh, i have some comment um of course i am not in a good shape yet so this is a first working day after my summer vacation, but I would like to draw your attention to one paper, which uh, paper of mine with Andreas Bochlian interviews was done in Dresden. It's a paper of 2003, I guess. I can give you exact reference. It's published in Physical Review E. Okay. Was that time there was, I mean, this many body localization was not so popular like today's, but essentially we study the transition from the regular to chaotic, uh, from chaotic to regular spectrum in the system of interacting bosons. We still, and means that, but the Hubbard model we still. Mm -hmm. And also, I this is a comment concerning the boundary conditions. So this is indeed the, the so the boundary condition does matter. In the paper I just mentioned, we use the periodic boundary conditions. And just to 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 tell you how it's done, you know that the, this term in the Hamiltonian, which is responsible for the static field, it can be moved in the Hamiltonian, or let's say in a different way. So you can use the guide's information, and then this term appears as a periodic driving of the bazaar Hallett models. It appears like the oscillating exponent in front of the tunnel matrix element. And then you can construct the, and then in this case, then you it is absolutely uh, correct to impose the periodic boundary conditions so that you have a system of finite size, and then we simply construct the Floquet operator over the one block period and study the eigenvalues of this Floquet operator. So the result is essentially the same. If the static field is weak, you have chaos in the bazaar hubbard models. If you have the strong static field, 
you have transitioned to the Poissonian spectrum, which I mean, today it's called, I, I understand, the money body legalization. That times we didn't call this this way, but the result is like this one. So I shall, yeah. And again, coming back to this periodic boundary condition. So you see, when you impose periodic boundary conditions, your system is finite. But there is indeed a difference if you consider the infinite lattice. And we have paper, I guess me and Sergey have uh, two papers, one from him, one from me, concerning the subdiffusive dynamics of the wave packet in the in the tilted lattices when you apply the tilt. Yeah, Without but this interactions. Is, yes. also, but this is this is uh, quite a different uh, um, problem because you you look at the expansion of a wave packet into an yes, empty. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. But so I just yeah. want yes, but I only want to stress that the boundary condition does matter. So you 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 address a different you can address different questions and then considering different boundary conditions. I shall send you all exactly. Yeah, th thank you very much for the comments. Uh, I, I agree with them. This is quite important. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, uh, Dario. Yeah. Um, when you do the, the finite sites uh, scaling analysis uh, for uh, the critical uh, Tension. Have you tried to consider also the case in which uh, you you make an ansatz in which the critical potential drift, the critical F? Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, the critical uh, F uh, drifts, you say, or? You did, you did an ansatz in which you put the, the ansatz in which you have a critical F, which is independent on the system sides. Yeah, uh, Andy, Andy, can you maybe show back this uh, this plot uh, sure. uh, with uh, finite size analysis, so that it's easier to the three different curves. Yes. Yeah. One. So here, F C is a constant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, now in in MBL, it's becoming trendy to consider also ansatzes in which F C is a function of L. Like a linear function and see if you get much better data collapse. Have you tried that? Or because no. there is this uh, this uh, debate about uh, the stability or not in the thermodynamic limit? But what kind of data collapse are you talking about? I mean, these three curves should be different, right? It's just yeah, you know, they they should they cross in one point if there is one point. Yes, and if now the point shifts if the drift then. Right, right, but uh, but oh, this one, this exactly. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. I wasn't yeah. looking at this. Okay, so, 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 you, so you can uh, you can right. you can try to see if your data suggests uh, an FC which is system size independent yeah. or dependent. This is a quite trendy question uh, in MDL. In this yeah, I think uh, at the time we calculated it, it was quite uh, computationally cha challenging to to. To have more accurate results, we here in finance uh, analysis, I must say, we also uh, added some small random perturbation uh, to average over many many uh, realization to to extract this uh, more smooth behavior of the curves. So at that moment, we uh, approached uh, maximal uh, possibilities of our computational equipment uh, to. Yeah, yeah. to so it requires much more computational efforts, of course, to, to resolve this uh, behavior. But yes, I, I would agree that it could have some dependence. Okay, more questions? Yes. So in the case, when you consider the entropy, can you go to this slide when you consider the entropy? Yeah. So from even the magic product state or the finite side uh, intuition, you see that uh, the entropy at last F is some kind of oscillation. Do you understand the oscillation? Yeah, more or less, uh, we think we observe it. It's kind of related to block oscillation behavior. So. And then basically in this idea, the boson and pigment will have different like, oscillation, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, they are uh, damped due to on-site interactions, we guess. Yeah. 
Okay. Are these block oscillations, uh, are the periods uh, the same as for a single particle or are they different? Uh, this is a nice question. Uh, actually, we didn't check that <laughs> that uh, numerically. So we we, uh, we assumed that also there are previous studies of uh, of uh, in in the uh, uh, with short range interactions, and they also observed such uh, uh, oscillations. So we are referring to to bluff oscillations, but we didn't check the periodicity. I think in case of long range interactions, it's more complex. So but formally it should be the same. Uh, not necessarily because you can have uh, you can take just uh, play games with two or three particles which you put onto such a, interacting particles which you put onto such a, a ladder with bias and then you can get uh, block oscillations with uh, uh, new periods which will be functions of the number of particles in addition yes. to other parameters. So that, that's why I'm asking whether these periods are different from the single particle. Block oscillation periods or uh, oil. <laughs> but for many bodies system with many particles, typically you see one two block periods, and they I don't know, everything I don't, decays. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we'll see or, or what we mm -hmm. do see here, but uh, that's why no, I experimentalist. I mean, the experimentalist is called atom physics. For interacting particles, they see one, two, three block periods, and then they decay exponentially. My question is whether the period uh, is different from the period of a single particle period. No, the same. They observe the same period. Not in the experiment, but in these simulations. Okay. Simulation. <laughs> okay. Okay, if there are no more questions, then uh, let's thank Andre again. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, your questions now, and discussion. Uh, normally, we would invite you to have food with us, but due to the big distance and the Zoom, we cannot. Uh, we still cannot teleport uh, food. Uh, please, guys, work on quantum computing so we can teleport food. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> right now, we can thank you once again. and. Uh, yeah. I hope, uh, uh, I also want to encourage everyone here, we had a little list at the end of, uh, of other uh, activities. If you uh, feel there is something uh, which uh, is related to your research, please feel free to reach out to Andre. I will uh, write you later about this uh, paper.